before the video, I wanted to announce that we are giving away five of our pure organic uh, clinically published virgin coconut oil in these little travel size bottles and these look extremely beat up you'll be getting new ones but this is actually our home stash which yeah. we use a lot and they're awesome it's a great little size for taking with you and doing like quick applications on the go for added my antimicrobial care and just to feel better and to win this to win the five travel bottles you have to like subscribe and click the bell and also comment a question or just ask a question in, a in the comments yeah in the um comments and section. we'll be picking a winner randomly at the end of our next live which is uh it's there's a change of schedule so it's going to be tuesday september 1 9 p.m eastern standard time which is wednesday morning 9 a.m september 2 in manila so again, make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell, comment, right. a question. And you could win five of our, five of our pure um, organic clinically published yeah. uh, virgin coconut oil called Know It Oil. Yeah. That's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi everyone. Um, so sorry for the very late start. Um, I'm not even sure if, if we're live at all or if you can hear me. It's been a really difficult morning with technical difficulties. Oh, I'm sweating already just from the, the stress of the technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so folks can hear me. I will cut a lot of stuff and basically talk about virgin coconut oil very, very quickly and why it's such a big deal at VMV. Um, my mom kind of fell in love with it. Um, what was it? It was at the time, the early 90s, when it was such a big thing in um, dermatology and cosmetics. All of a sudden, botanicals were being talked about. Botanicals, 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 botanicals. And then, you know, a lot of, for her especially, and for a lot of contact dermatitis specialists, they were like, botanicals, whatever, they really aren't anything. And she decided, you know what, let me really look into this, and decided to look into coconut oil because in the Philippines in particular, we have such a long, long history of using coconut oil in everything from cooking um, to hair to skin to stuff. And she really dove deep because it's my mother and that's what she does. And so she got into the whole history of why coconut oil was so big at one point and then kind of disappeared. And it turned out it was sort of a, a lobbying issue with the American <laughs> agricultural um, big agri. And it's wonderful for your heart, it's wonderful for your skin, it's wonderful for your hair. I will cover some basics now. We'll call in my mom because, you know, we end at 10 or so, and I wanna make sure that we get as much in as we can. So back to VCO. Basically, she got obsessed. She got into a lot of clinical studies and then insisted that we make a um, virgin coconut oil product to sell. And at the time, I was really refusing to because I was like, but you know, you get this sort of on our local beaches. Why would anyone believe that this has any kind of clinical application, right? It just seems so hooey to me. And you know, long story short, she won. <laughs> she basically, I really had to swallow um, a lot of pride and, and I just don't fight her anymore. She comes up with the weirdest things, you know? And it's just, since I was a little girl, it would be like shampoo with no scent. And this was, you know, right a few years after, gee, your hair smells terrific was like the biggest thing, right? And then a toothpaste with no flavor and sunscreen for indoors and then virgin coconut oil. And so anyway, we don't fight her anymore. And basically she got, arguably she was the one who really got the most studies on virgin coconut oil and the skin specifically published in peer reviewed journals. So yeah, I, I'll credit her a lot with sort of being one of the forerunners into the virgin coconut oil craze. Almost everything that we make has our virgin coconut oil and the virgin coconut oil that we sell is precisely the coconut oil that she uses in her clinical studies and has published. And that's in almost everything that we make. Um, vmvhypoallergenics.com is where you can find most of it in the, in the United States and elsewhere. And in the Philippines, it's vmvhypoallergenics.ph. In the USA, we have 
a great special on our mascaras. You can get a free one when you buy one. And then we have free shipping until August 30 for no qualifying purchase. And in the Philippines, we still have our skin calming bundle, which of course has a lot of VCO in it. And we have a flash sale on our illuminance brightening products for hyperpigmentation, uh, etc. But so all that said, you know, forget it. We've lost so much time. I'll just call her in already. This is my mom, <laughs> Dr. Vermen Veralia Rowell. Um, she is a dermatopathologist. And again, one of the more published clinical researchers on virgin coconut oil and skin. So say hi to everyone, mom. Hi, everybody. Okay. So how did you get interested in virgin coconut oil? I got interested in virgin coconut oil because when I met my husband, he wanted to sell the the compounding I made for acne, and he said, why don't you sell this? Then that way more people will be able to use some medicated, in a sense, uh, product in the cosmetic. I said, I don't sell things at all. So he said, I tell you what, let's make a company that we call Excuse Beauty me? and the Bear, where I'm the beauty because I'm the one who sells it to the beauties out there, and you are the bear because they're serious about study. So here you are, another pair of the beauty and the bear. I'm more so why bear. did I go into coconut oil? That yes. was the question. Yes. The fact is that Laura was right. At the very beginning of, this was about 1990s, you know, late 80s, people were beginning to talk about naturals. Naturals, organics, not so much yet, but it came. And so I said, there are some, ev some anecdotal evidence that it seems to work for this and that. Tea tree oil, you know, aloe vera is one of the very first ones. I said, I'd like to study and natural, a product. But what will I study? So I'm sitting here in our, uh, you know, home. Uh, garden, <laughs> home. <laughs> I see this coconut tree up there, beautiful big coconuts in it. And I thought, huh, oh. those are everywhere. <laughs> Let me know about them. And then at about the same time, I went to Beijing for a World Congress. This was 98, 98 right. 1998, and met Dr. John Cabara fantastic guy when everybody else thought vegetable oils and all that were really not you know anything interesting he did studies that were that were on coconut oil and That's a right. derivative in coconut oil Jan called monolaurin should be legend yeah. honestly he's, he's really legendary in his discoveries with monolaurin should be treated like penicillin the discovery of penicillin just fantastic work right so starting in the 1970s actually 80s john started to uh, do studies on monolaurin. I met him. I was impressed that this is our coconut oil, sir. I went up to him after the lecture. I said, this is just in coconut, the coconut oil that, you know, falls from the tree. <laughs> and he said, yes. And I said, sir, but all your studies you presented are laboratory studies. And he looked at me, with blue eyes and twinkling eyes, and he said, it's time for you to do the clinical studies. There you go. So I came back home and I started the monolaurin. I thought, I'm not going to bloody, you know, study the coconut oil that's so common. Let, let me at least do the monolaurin derivative from the yeah. coconut oil that he had uh, gotten from it. And lo and behold, I compared the coconut oil with isopropyl alcohol and over a uh, 10, you know, sessions of it, this was a very, very well refined FDA protocol that used a, a common uh, colonizer drug called, not colonizer, invasive drug in the skin and the GI tract and all, called Seracia Marcescens. So I said, okay, we'll do that. And because I didn't trust what I was doing yet, I did 15 <laughs> patients on one side and 15 patients on the other using the monolaurin and the isopropyl alcohol. Right. And they were in the same basin. Point yes, is, fantastic. But here's the thing, we gotta get into VCO because we've done a, oh, we've okay. done a live on Mono Lauren. So specifically, and I'm rushing a little bit because I apologize to everybody, oh, it took okay. us forever to get live. Okay, I'll be more direct why, in my answers. Why is VCO good for skin? For many, many, many reasons. Among them would be the simplest is that when you put it on your skin, it's very silky. You know, it feels nice and it's not a heavy oil at all because mm. it may be saturated, which makes people think immediately of saturated, heavy, unsaturated, uh, you know. Not you know, that's actually an important thing. We're, we're going to get into skin and nutrition in a future live mm -hmm. and she'll break down a little bit more all of the stuff about saturated oils and what that really right. means. But coconut oil is a saturated oil, yes. but it is extremely light. 
And right. that saturatedness is actually a very, very good thing. Because, yeah. I'm going to interrupt now, yeah. <laughs> because the, the saturation of that oil makes it stay straight and flat. So when you put it on the skin, it actually is like a palisade and therefore it becomes an occlusive, very much like your petroleum occlusive jelly, means like, like a barrier. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't allow the water from within to go out, to go out especially in barrier deficient mm. or inadequate skin from all of these chemicals we're reacting to. Mm. So first, it is an occlusive. And at the same time, it has an, a humectant. Why is it a humectant? Humectant means water. So therefore, what does it have to do with water? Well, it is made out of triglycerides. Tri meaning three fatty acids and the glycerol back backbone. So three fatty acids to a glycerol backbone, which attracts water like anything. It's a very big absorbent of water. So on the skin, it's now there sitting as an occlusive. It breaks down into its fatty acids. It, uh, it then absorbs water so that your skin now, which is parched and dry and flaky, again from irritations and all, it becomes nice and soft. Okay, so that's an occlusive, a humectant. The number three, very, very important. <laughs> it contributes towards the fatty acids of the cells, cell, lipid by membrane, by lipid membrane of the cell walls of the skin, whichever is destroyed. By three. lipid membrane. By lipid membrane. So two lipids. So we started with, it creates palisades. It's occlusive, so it prevents water loss. Then barrier repair. Right. Then? No. Then humectant, because of the glycerin. Uh, humectant, okay. Then? Repair. Fatty acids uh, contribute to the fatty, uh, to the lipid by layer cell membrane, which is destroyed when you break it down with dermatitis. Next. So it's a lot of stuff. The number four, that's only number three. Number four, <laughs> it's a fantastic antimicrobial. This is true. And starting from Kabara onwards to uh, researchers, not just in the United States, but also in Sweden, in Europe, in Spain, many other studies through the years, 70s, 80s, 90s, especially 90s, you begin to see even more studies yep. being generated, showing in the laboratory and a few in the clinical that coconut oil, dagonet, is a fantastic antimicrobial and it's broad spectrum. So this guy from, um, sorry, I can't remember the name, but this guy from Sweden, he then tried to understand why is this so broad spectrum, not just to a virus, including even coronaviruses, but also to bacteria and viruses and even fungi. And then he found out and showed in a beautiful electron microscopic video image that the reason for that is because of the fatty acid types, medium chain of the coconut oil. What it does is it actually is able to penetrate the cell, the lipid membrane also, of microbes and as such being physical not enzymatic like most antibiotics will do so therefore the the enemy the bug sorry gets we have a helicopter i hope it doesn't bother audio audio has been my nemesis all day today so so the action of antibiotics is by light uh, by enzymes well the bug gets uh, smart smart becomes and, yeah, resistant and mutates, by producing yeah. an anti that uh, you know, that enzyme that is using to kill them. On the other hand, what does the fatty acids do? They, they puncture. Right. And in that uh, image, it, it breaks down the cell almost immediately. It's almost like a physical action. If you think about when it's people quick. talk about why just washing your hands is so effective for coronavirus uh, prevention, because there's, it's a physical action of, of tearing it apart, basically, right? This is something similar. So it's not it's not an action where the bugs can get smart and, and become tolerant to treatment, which is why there's far less tolerance, let's say, to virgin coconut oil than to antibiotics and antivirals and stuff like that. So this question comes out all the time, and we just got it again. Isn't virgin coconut oil comedogenic? <laughs> comedogenic should be, um, you should remove that from your vocabulary already. <laughs> <laughs> the term comedogenic started way back in the turn of the century, maybe, when there was war and lots of people were working on mm -hmm. halogens and chlorines and all of that. Mm. And so they began to develop 
chloride acne, you know. And so Dr. Kligman, much later, then decided he would do some studies on that. And there were other people, actually, before Kligman, who did studies and did it not on human skin, but on bear, uh, but, but on rabbit skin. <laughs> we're back to bears. Rabbit Rabbits. ears. Rabbit ears. Right. right. On rabbit ears. And it was only for something like a week, for mm. a short time. It was really, it's truly, if you look at the methodology together with what we do now, when we do any kind of studies on skin, it would li it, uh, at least a month, you know. So... There, um, later on, Dr. Dralus, uh, in 1995, I believe, right. did a study that's properly done on human skin, the way we're going to be doing it, in order to really study whether, in fact, certain chemicals, ingredients as is, or the products that contain them, are actually acnegenic or comedogenic, and found there was no relation at all with the, with the previous study. Right. So, bottom line here, when you see a lot of these studies, mostly online, that say, not, they're not even studies. What tends to happen is there, there's a lot of websites that say which ingredients are actually comedogenic, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these websites use the as their reference the really old studies from the 1970s on rabbit ear assays. Um, they were inconsistent even at the time that they were published. And they have since been challenged successfully and multiple times. And the newer methods are much more accurate. They're done on human skin in actual use conditions. And in those studies, certainly ones that we've replicated as well, virgin coconut oil is not comedogenic. And the more important thing probably is they're not, it's not acnegenic. And I can't speak about the study that we did because it was pure curiosity of ours. Mm. wanted to compare coconut oil with other oils. I think there was a total of eight oils that are very commonly used in cosmetics and skin care. And voila, only one oil, but I'm not going to mention it because it wasn't published by... I, I think we're going to uh, continue and do more patients because we only did eight following the methodology the of Dr. Dralos, right? right. We want the, the authors, the editors rather said, can you just up the number of subjects? You see what I mean? Yeah. So therefore we did. And we will, we will, we will and we'll Point publish Point being, it. VCO is not committed to So it, yes. Uh, in multiple studies, it, it's done very well. And again, I would caution you, when you see um, information online that talks about studies, do a little bit of digging and see what studies those are because some of them are quite old it's just they were they were the standard for a very long time but with dr drelos et al and several other derms after her it's just it's been consistent it's been better it's been much more accurate the next question we have is can i eat virgin coconut oil and how uh yes you <laughs> but i don't know why you would eat it if you can use it as a topping on your uh, on your bread and then put on I, cinnamon. I guess the question is, can it can it be ingested? It is highly edible. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was be it must be in the the food of many people all in about sixty percent of the world. Is it you That's know right. where where That's the right. tropical and you know the Asian and whatever. Yeah. We we use coconut oil regularly in our cook in our food from the meat yeah. to the oil to the water exactly um, to the sugar. But one thing I want to clarify here you always say of all the cooking oils so when you see like a package of potato chips or something and it says vegetable oils and it's rapeseed and safflower and sunflower and these things or when you're cooking with olive oil olive oil is probably is much much better than rapeseed sunflower etc etc but coconut oil is still the best for cooking and for cooking it's okay even if you use the cheap um, sort of copra, copra derived, copra derived, you know, stuff in a can, the cheap stuff that again, 60% of the world's population, that's their cooking oil. That's our cooking oil. It is the best cooking oil for you. But if I'm not mistaken, what I hear you say all the time for things that are fresh, like a fresh salad or for your bullet coffee, you put a tablespoon in your coffee Yummy. for these things or for swirling for a sore throat or for <laughs> For swishing, if you have canker sores like I tend to get, use the pure organic virgin coconut oil that is not extracted with heat or chemicals. It's not left out in the sun like copra is. Um, it's a better quality oil, plus you're sure there's not other stuff in it that might be allergenic or irritating. 
Um, so definitely for cooking oil, RBD, copra, it doesn't matter, but choose, you know, coconut oil. RBD, by the way, stands for refined, bleached, and deodorized. So it does go through much more processing. Pure organic virgin coconut oil, especially cold pressed, like she does from her farm. Her farm is like her, ex her experimental lab, basically. That's right. Um, and that's where they kind of perfected a method of extraction that is very, very quick from when something is harvested. It's cold. There's absolutely no heat added. It's not subjected to centrifuge or anything else. Because the thing about a lot of these wonderful plants, the more you do to them, even tomatoes or carrots or whatever, the more you do to them, you already start losing some of the important uh, phytochemicals that you need. So a pure virgin organic coconut oil is really what you're looking for, for salads, bullet coffee, swirling in the mouth, dealing with lesions and sores, bed sores in the hospital, yeah. for atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, you look for the pure organic cold pressed virgin coconut or oil. Or simply for acne, or and for irritations, acne. and right. sun sensitivity on the face. Mm -hmm. It's very good because they have, again, the occlusive, the humectant, the uh, barrier repair, uh, property of the fatty acids that actually for every cell uh, that's destroyed it can contribute to uh, and then it's antimicrobial effect so it's fantastic it is it helps we normalize have, the microbiota of the skin we have a question here from Joanne is it okay for toddlers three years old to take VCO internally actually there is monolaurin which is part of the coconut oil itself uh, in about 17-18% in breast milk, human breast milk. Exactly. So exactly, you can. As a matter of fact, there was a study done by Dr. Mantering of PGH. Fantastic study of comparing neonates that were under, under, okay. under weight. Yeah. Let me back this up. Okay. So yeah. the short answer, Joanne, is yes, you can feed your <laughs> yes. toddler, your three-year-old I, I do wonder virgin a bit. coconut oil. But again, for that like direct feeding, first I wonder why you would be giving it to your toddler. I would assume maybe as a laxative. Um, number one, do it with your pediatrician's okay. The reason for that is there's really nothing bad that could happen. As she mentioned, monolaurin, which is part of coconut or a derivative of coconut oil, is present in breast milk. So yeah, it's totally fine. But your pediatrician knows your toddler best. And so if your toddler is having a gastrointestinal issue or whatever, VCO is probably great, but it's a little bit of a laxative. So I don't, that needs to be cleared with your pediatrician, period, right? Um, but yeah, like in general, in food, absolutely, not a problem. And then what she was saying is there are several studies, one from the Philippine General Hospital, etc., comparing neonates, um, so or newborns, basically. Underweight, underweight. Who are underweight, right? They're mal not malnourished, but they're underweight. Some of them are preemies or whatever. Um, and they're fed virgin coconut oil to help get their their weight up better, um, to up their nutrition, etc. And virgin Versus coconut oil. another oil. And virgin coconut oil is actually in a lot of neonate formulas to help get them stronger, quicker. So it's actually quite safe, even for newborns. But again, these are newborns, so trust your pediatrician, of course. Um, we have a question from Michelle, which is a little complicated, but it's cool. I have abdominal adhesions and adult acne. I took monolaurin uh, more than a decade ago, been wanting to take them again, which I believe comes from coconut. Yes, monolaurin comes from coconut oil. Could monolaurin affect my adhesions? And could monolaurin and VCO help me not only with acne, but with my adhesions? Acne is so multifactorial mm. that it may not be at all the adhesions. There may be other factors, the stress of the times, the um, exposure to chlorinated chemicals in your products that you're using in your skin or in the swimming pool or in uh, the things that we're using in our houses to clean everything up. Or it may be due to another in kind of an infection or maybe the gastrointestinal thing is, you know, a little bit, needs a little bit uh, to, to be looked at. Yeah. So the adhesions, uh, I do not have in my mind a direct effect on your acne. You must consider all the factors that go into adult acne, including PCOS, that's cystic ovaries, for instance, pretty Polycystic common. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's just a simple ultrasound will help you out. But you must try to address all the other right. situations in your life that may be producing right. the acne of adults, which right. is usually stress-related as well. So in summary, perhaps 
mono laurin and virgin coconut oil could help. Yeah. But this is the kind of thing that might require a cross consultation with two specialists, right? Yes. Depending on if there are other issues to, to right. take into account. Right. But would it hurt? No, probably not. Again, uh -huh. monolaurin is in breast milk. <laughs> like it's very natural to us. Um, yeah. And virgin coconut oil is not acnogenic. So. Here's a thought regarding your problem. It may be that if you drink coconut oil, you will help normalize the uh, bacterial or the microbiota within your gastro gastrointestinal tract so that you don't have low-grade infection going on, right. secondary to the to the adhesions. Mm -hmm. That's just a thought, like doc, like Laura, like Dr. Laura said. <laughs> <laughs> you have to confer with both your dermatologist as well as your gastroenterologist to understand what's going on exactly. in your body. Yeah. And for everyone watching, this is not medical advice because obviously she doesn't see you, doesn't know your history. So this are maybe talking points to bring up with your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, arrange a teleconsultation. Um, maybe ask your doctors to, to, to talk. She regularly speaks to specialists, especially when she has hospitalized patients. Oh, absolutely. Um, then, you know, you have to talk to the cardiologist is giving the patient this, which is causing a photoallergic reaction. The neurologist is giving this, so she has to talk to him about how do we balance out the endocrinologist, etc. So <laughs> the infectious it's disease complicated. Specials. And, but it's not impossible. It just requires some consistency and care and specialists talking to each other. Um, we have another question that has come in. Hi, I, from Myla. I've been using VCO as my facial wash and I just wash it off as I shower. There's usually still oil left and I just leave it. Is that all right? Brilliant. Yeah, that's actually brilliant. She um, loves that. Myla, no. nice, nice to talk with you here. <laughs> Uh, that's a great idea, especially yeah. if you tend to be on the dry skin side. But yep. if it's a really ongoing dry skin for a while, you may want to find out why you are dry skin. Exactly. Because it might I, be an underlying irritation. As an adult, you mm. don't have that oily skin that you normally have as a young child. Unless Tell you me have about it. Additional <laughs> unless you have additional problems, which she has, which is the reason why she no. still is Everything has just come but out. <laughs> you have to find out what the cause is of your oily skin, of your dry skin. It might be, again, irritants from the sun, from the light, from pollution, for particulate matters in the atmosphere, all sorts of that, from the dioxins, from whatever is there in the go. air because of industry, yep. and, you know, and our traffic, and anyway, lots but of things. In terms of this washing, what you're doing, um, so number one, back in Roman, like Chinese, ancient Rome, etc., there was no soap, right? And oils were used as soap. So the way it is is the molecules grab dirt and take them away. So oils are actually a cleanser, can be. Number two, what you're doing is actually what we regularly suggest to people who come with us and say. I have contact dermatitis or atopic dermatitis or psoriasis or something very complex and I want to try your products. One of the first things we'll say, or I have a reaction that's happening now, either acne or redness or whatever. The first thing we'll say is stop everything. For one week, stop everything. A fast. Do skin a, fast. a skin fast is what we call it. For seven days, the only thing you do is use pure, organic, cold pressed, virgin coconut oil as your cleanser. So what you're doing is actually what we recommend for skin that is reacting, unhappy. We try to just get it back to ground zero. Mm -hmm. um, so you rule out other factors that could be causing the issue. So yeah, what you're doing is actually brilliant. Um, but then in addition, look for uh, causes. And by the way, I just read an article the other day about 81% of this, uh, people who were surveyed about whether they have rosacea or dry skin or something and that 81 percent said they had rosacea so it's a very common problem yeah it doesn't all look 81%. like jimmy durante with a big nose it can range from just a simple redness that right. comes off and on to right. tiny little vessels that seem to be there but very tiny and I, yeah so uh, the little pimples from it actually rosacea produces its own pimples. and remember our skins are exposed to different things now we're exposed to a lot more chemicals because of the disinfection because of the pandemic so we are dealing with a lot more problems. Cleansing with virgin coconut oil is not a bad idea to lower the inflammation, antimicrobial care. It's more soothing. Occlusive this and humectant. This is occlusive and humectant. <laughs> Our skins get so dry and irritated from all of the washing, washing and all that. 
virgin coconut oil is a great way to sort of counteract all of that. Uh, sh big shout out, by the way. I know we have viewers. Hi, Nika. Uh, viewers in Thailand and in Nepal are wonderful friends from Railcos. So hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We started a little wonky because of the connection, but we're here now. I have another question that has come in. If virgin coconut oil is made into capsules, is the efficacy affected? Not at all. Okay. Not at some all. Some people don't like swallowing the But BCO. a capsule normally contains only about mm, one gram at the most. So mm. uh, just adding a little bit there. Most of the supplements that you take, vitamin C, vitamin, all this stuff, I'll, there are study after study after study, there's study after study after study after study showing very little of the actual thing makes it into the final form because a lot of these things are notoriously unstable, vitamin C for example. So to process it, extract it and get it into pill form, you lose a lot of it. Yes. And there, just Google it. There's so many really reliable published studies that show of a claim of vitamin C or vitamin whatever, there's hardly any in the final form. Number one. Number two, again, these things are antioxidants. They're very unstable, photo labile, etc. It's really better to get them in your food. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. If you really can't stomach a salad, at least juice, but get the fibers in. It's really better to get it natural. However, virgin coconut oil is so stable. You don't want a virgin coconut oil processed into a capsule that was copra, right? Yes. Uh, refined bleach deodorized Got and it. left sitting out in the sun. You don't want that because you, le you might have lost a lot of the photochemicals or phytochemicals that make it so wonderful, yeah. right? Um, but it is more explain stable that further. Than yeah. When you analyze coconut oil, the very first thing that people will analyze are the fatty acids. And whether you are an RBD oil or an extra virgin, virgin, whatever, coconut oil, <laughs> they all are the same, the profile of those fatty acids. The difference is in what is called the non-saponifiable saponifiable portion of the coconut oil. Say that five times fast. Say that again, saponifiable. <laughs> that portion takes a little bit more expertise in the laboratory. You have, they, we, we ask for it, and that's the part that has all of these magical things that it can do as an antioxidant. Unfortunately, that's also the part that gets easily, you know, oxidized and all of that. And so you have to be very careful. And that's going back. You do the food that is fresher from the, uh, you know, this close to table concept is not bad at all. It's pretty yeah. good. Gar garden to table. Yeah. And again. the virgin coconut oil that is cold pressed and, you know, attended to properly and all that. So and not at all encapsulated from whatever kind of oil. That's the kind of oil you should be uh, drinking, if you like. I prefer adding to my food. My food becomes wonderfully tasty. <laughs> okay, but um, to Jasmine was asking about taking it and people who sort of struggle taking it, you don't get a lot in capsules. So to get the equivalent of like a tablespoon, you need quite a bit, and yeah. you really have to check the source of the oil in the capsules, mm -hmm. but it is an option for yeah. sure. Um, and another thing you can do is, she did a wonderful study on, a, on an anti-inflammatory diet, Ooh, yes. where basically what they did is they just made sure they ate anti-inflammatory foods. So a lot of fish, veggies, et cetera, et cetera. But the main thing was they cooked with coconut oil. Already that does a lot to bring down inflammation versus using other oils. It's right? a fantastic study because what we did was, it was very well controlled. Everybody got, got the same lecture about lifestyle diet, sleep, uh, avoidance of stress, meditate, pray, whatever. In addition, weekly they would come to our laboratory and we would give them a big supply of food, all of them, so that there was never any excuse that there was no fish or there was no fresh vegetables or fresh fruits and all that. They were all given the same fruit, uh, the same food stuff. Then in addition, we said blinded, one, uh, one group had the coconut oil given to them for use for the week. The other group had the uh, a common that oil that's the best used oil that is there in the market. Mm -hmm. And the results of the study are fantastic. The skin biopsies showed with biopsies. Much yeah, we did a biopsy to read, and right? then we sent it to a laboratory in New York. Mm -hmm. And then we um, some uh, they they sent it back and said there is a difference between very very cool the skin biopsies. Okay, we don't have a lot of time, guys. We have and, about five minutes, and I still have to close this out. Um, can it really help with COVID? 
we feel very strongly about that that it will and i have a lot of evidence from that not directly on the COVID itself, but there are on so many studies. On this particular coronavirus. Yeah, on this right. particular coronavirus, not yet, but on several others, including the Argentinian hemorrhagic fever virus, which is also very similar, crown and all that, and the SARS-V2, uh, the, um, they are antimicrobial. So we feel that it is also anti-COVID right. yeah. of any gene and acting as good as, simply again, because its action would basically be physical again, right? right? So what we are actually having a study, we hope will be approved. There are at least two studies ongoing now, actually, right, um, on virgin coconut oil for this particular coronavirus. And usually these studies happen because there's a m very decent amount of evidence showing right. the likelihood is pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, there, it so looks... We're, we're going to compare it with one arm on something that is commonly used and the other. And we'll be doing it for mild to moderate cases simply because I feel but the using this in mild to moderate cases, we will clear them up in a very short time. And then they can continue using the, the, the virgin coconut oil for about, uh, for a while, as they're antiseptic, essentially. And we feel that there will be none of this uh, reported reinfection that's going on or recurrence from the, from the, old, the, the first infection. Okay, that said, do not stop wearing your mask, face shield, do not stop washing your hands and using your monolaurin hand sanitizer or whatever hand sanitizer. Do not stop the disinfecting all around you. We use coconut oil as part of our disinfection protocol. The point is, uh, the evidence looks extremely good, extremely mm -hmm. promising. So there are studies ongoing now on this particular coronavirus. Right. But this does not mean that you should be hugging everybody and in crowded places, in enclosed spaces. That's right. No. Follow mm, the rules. Follow the rules, please. Two, two um, meters distancing, right? Exactly. So we're almost out of time. Um, what can, do you really use virgin coconut oil in your... Uh, I was going to show, that, show off my beautiful skin. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, well, <laughs> oh I got God. discombobulated. <laughs> so do you really use virgin coconut oil with your patients? with things like generalized herpes, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. psoriasis, eczema, like hospitalized cases. Yeah. On the severe cases that I see that are really generalized, swollen, red, itchy, really, really bad, I, I very, very often hospitalize them and have bathtubs uh, for uh, treatments for them without any lights at all. So everything is dark, even the bedroom is uh, dark. Because light is really, both indoor as well as outdoor, is really very, you know, activating in the skin, it produces more oxidation in the skin. So that's what they do, and within about a week at most, they're already about 70, 80% better, just pure, nothing applied, because they've been applying so many things already, and instead they just, every day, two or three times a day, they're saturated with the coconut oil on the skin all over. they fantastic. Um, I, I've done it so many times that, um, and the beauty about it is these are usually patients who've really been, you know, given up. That, yeah, they've just, really gone through hell. Yeah, for many, 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 many years. So, how, yes. How much VCO should I eat or drink daily during dermatitis flare-ups? It's not the eating. Or, oh, yeah. The eating would be, in, you can just put it in your food uh, to cook with, to drench with on your favorite salads. I have to show okay, them. Okay, so we're still on. This is her book. So in, I told you in 1998, I started to double with monolaurin and found it amazing. So I said, well, I want to test coconut oil. And out of those studies that I started in 98, the year 2000 was my first article that got published on the isopropyl alcohol between versus monolaurin, two of the studies. And then more came so that by 2005, I was able to publish these books, Rx Coconuts. I have a very limited number of books already. I haven't decided to do a third printing. But if anybody is interested. <laughs> okay. So, and also, if you happen to have access to uh, published journals online, you can Google her name, Veralia Rowell, and a lot of studies on virgin coconut oil. We have one more question. Uh, I have ongoing dry skin for a very long time. I was prescribed with hydrocortisone cream and tacrose way back in 2018 i'm still having very red sensitive skin okay. those are excellent those are excellent yeah. medications but it has to be used properly 
And number one, yeah. look for the cause. If you've been using hydrocortisone since 2018, though, yeah, that we might, might need that, to get off it. Yeah, you may have to get off your hydrocortisone because really what we do with the steroids, the stronger, of course, two weeks, four weeks at the most. But hydrocortisone, you can use a little bit longer, but not on a chronic long time, right. two years standing, so, because then yeah. the barrier becomes... If the skin is still very disrupted. dry and red and sensitive, the first thing we'd recommend is getting a patch test um, mm -hmm. and certainly talking with your dermatologist to really try to identify what's causing it because it could be anything. It could be the soap, it could be moisturizer, it could be hair care that trickles onto skin, it could be your laundry, it could be your bed sheets, it, it could be your diet, diet. It, it could be lots of things. A whole host of things. So yeah. that needs a good investigation. Yeah, and, and there are new things that have come up already okay. now for atopic dermatitis, for instance, and uh, these atopic dermatitis especially is right on the radar. The psoriasis, we're doing quite well already with it, with the new, new biologics which are so targeted. Uh, I use coconut oil, by the way, a lot in my psoriasis patients. I'm like, I use the cheapest and the, you know, the most common um, oil for the skin, co coconut oil to drowse them. And then in addition, I'm also one of the top users of biologics in my country, where we give targeted medications yeah. for psoriasis. And yeah. most of the time, they're 100% clear. It's really amazing. But now the newest studies are on biologics would be on atopic dermatitis. So atopic dermatitis can be he can be treated with it. Oh, someone's asking related uh, petrolatum or petroleum jelly or virgin coconut oil for psoriasis. It has its uses because it's a wonderful petroleum occlusive. Jelly has yeah, its petroleum. Uses. It is a wonderful occlusive. Its only thing is that, however, that unlike coconut oil, it doesn't break down into fatty acids that do all of the other things that coconut oil can do. In an extremely dry skin person though, I will put the coconut oil first. On top of it, I will still put the petroleum, the pure 100% Vaseline, Vasalba. I'll put it on top. Okay. Yes, in too. summary, because she has to go, and I also actually have something after this, virgin coconut oil, um, even the cheap Copra refined bleach deodorized oil, it's really cheapo stuff, store-bought in a can, whatever, is better than any other oil for cooking, truly. Um, but for things like your salads, your bullet coffee, for swirling in the mouth, for canker sores, for gargling, gargling uh, for disinfection. disinfection, and also for sore throats that are threatening, and for use on your skin, particularly very sensitive skin, uh, even your hair, choose cold pressed, virgin, um, not by centrifuge, really almost manual cold pressing, organic certified uh, virgin coconut oil. It is not comedogenic. These comedogenic uh, reports were based on studies from the 1970s on rabbit ears that were inconsistent at best back then and have since been repetitively challenged successfully uh, using mm -hmm. human skin, etc. So, oh my goodness, of course everyone uh, uh, okay, I'll try to answer some of this now, but she has to go. So thank you again. And if there are more questions on virgin coconut oil, we can do a part two, especially because we had technical problems at the, at the beginning of this. But we will be back. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'll continue a bit. God, her skin's so nice. I told you, I told you. I told, wait, 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 I have to do this. Because this is why I wore this outfit. It's in that beautiful skin. Now, are you impressed? 81 years old. I mean, I can't argue is the thing so bye-bye oh bye, bye love. all right see ya <laughs> can you i up? love doing this with you oh good i'm glad all right <sighs> so uh in closing guys i wanna there was a question related on using our creamy rich moisturizer again i really think at this point it might be time to talk to a dermatologist who is a specialist in contact dermatitis and atopic dermatitis to really get through the history of what might, what might be causing the redness and the sensitivity. Um, our products certainly will help, especially the allergen-free ones, but it's better to really understand what it is you need to avoid. And then uh, how to order the book, VMB Skin Research Center and Clinics. Um, hopefully someone can post the number or, or the Facebook link. Uh, but yeah, you can get the book. It's pretty cool. It's, you know, I think my mom tried to write it for the layperson, so it's not too technical. And she really goes into the history of coconut oil, which is 
fascinating. Um, and she talks about her clinical studies for skin. She goes into other clinical studies for it taken internally. She goes into that whole satura saturated, um, why it's good that it's a saturated oil, um, et cetera, et cetera. She even gives suggestions of how to incorporate it in your diet. So it's a really, really cool book. And then thoughts on VCO as a feminine wash. Absolutely brilliant. It's excellent. The worst thing you can do as a feminine wash is use anything that has allergens. The top and most common being fragrance because it is one of the top, top allergens and causes a lot of problems um, in the very sensitive mucosa of the vagina. And uh, if there are concerns in the microbiota in the area, like a possible fungal issue or whatever, virgin coconut oil can help. The other thing you don't want in a feminine wash is anything that says antibacterial. We are fantastic. Women are awesome creatures. We are miracle workers. We can give life. Our skin can expand in pregnancy and come back. We can give milk. I mean, our bodies are insanely awesome. There is nothing wrong with any part of our body, including the vagina. So frankly, anything that says that you need to make it smell like a garden, just drop it. Um, there's nothing to correct down there. We have an incredible microbiota in the vaginal area, a delicate balance of different microbes that's very, very healthy. So the less you mess around with it, the better. Virgin coconut oil, even just superwash, even just Clark wash, a very gentle wash, that's all you need. Um, combination oily and sensitive skin and yeah, virgin coconut oil is wonderful on your face, absolutely. I use it and I have now, at this point, a combination of oily, acne prone, very sensitive, I've just developed seborrheic dermatitis in certain areas, and dry skin. So I use virgin coconut oil absolutely daily. What, if the concern is acne, the main thing to look at is what are you, what else is going on? She mentioned it's very multifactorial what else is going on that's causing the acne? Where is the acne? Is it here? Is it here? It could be the shampoo and conditioner. Uh, is it in very sweaty areas under the bra, maybe the, the butt or the thighs? Um, that could not be acne. That could be sweat acne or malassezia folliculitis, which is strictly not speaking, that is strictly speaking, not an acne. So yeah, virgin coconut oil is great as well. Um, guapo ng bata sa likod. Thank you so much. It's my son. And <laughs> cold press different from expeller pressed unrefined VCO. So we had mentioned earlier, the more that you do to the coconut when trying to get the oil out, the more risk of losing the phytochemicals. So that includes anything that includes anything that has to do with speed, uh, which is why she doesn't like centrifuge either. She really likes that old, old traditional style of manual pressing. Um, and it is less efficient. Any sort of organic virgin coconut oil that's relatively cheap, you have to wonder why. And it might be because they use more efficient methods like expellers and centrifuge, etc. So you need less coconuts to make a lot of, up uh, to make a bottle of oil. Uh, at VMV, we actually need four full coconuts to make one bottle of know it oil. So, yeah. A reminder that in the United States on vmvhypoallergenics.com, it is free shipping with no qualified purchase all day every day until august 30. we also have a special on our super popular ula lash mascara where you get one and then you get a second one as your free gift and in the philippines vmvhypoallergenics.ph or at the clinic uh, or on viber um, you can get our skin calming bundle which is a lot of products with virgin coconut oil because everyone needs to calm down including our skin and we have a flash sale on our Illuminance hyperpigmentation line, which is important because a lot of the stuff she was talking about, allergens that we use in disinfection during COVID are also photoallergens. So we're seeing a lot more hyperpigmentation concerns. Um, in the Philippines, uh, if you need a consultation, a teleconsultation, my mom actually does do them. And so do other dermatologists that we work with. So drop us a private message if you'd like help with that. And Remember everywhere that you can private message us your patch test results and we can customize recommendations for you based on your particular allergens. Um, we will be changing our live stream schedule. So this is the last time we'll be streaming live on Fridays. Next week we will be live uh, 9 p.m. Tuesday nights, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. 
and 9 a.m. Wednesday morning in Manila. So please know that ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. On that note, I will close up, guys. And again, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties earlier today. I guess this is our, you know, virtual reality at this point.